Litecoin. Right now we're at $84.12. We're down 1.94%. And guys, this is August 13th, 2019. It's 4.08 p.m. Eastern Time. And there's a couple key things that I really need to get in with you guys because I want you to pay attention to this. Right now, this trend really is pushing down hard on us here, these moving averages. And what we're going to do, we're going to go from the one hour all the way back to the one day chart. And we're going to take a look at these. So if you guys like these videos, you find them informative, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And to all the people who do hit that like button, I really appreciate you. And all the people watching this video, guys, I appreciate you. So thank you for being here and we'll do the best that we can. Remember, I'm not your financial advisor. Guys, I'm not a professional at this. Just self-taught for the last couple of years trying to learn as much as I can. And I want to share it with as many people as I can as well because I've been new in this space before and many people here are new. And, you know, I've listened to some of the wrong people and I should have done my own due diligence and started studying as soon as I got into this market. And I had to learn a few important lessons and then I just really started going after this stuff and that's why I want to help people as much as I can. So we'll dig into this. First of all, guys, what I want you to pay attention to, we're going to be starting with Litecoin here on the one hour. So my orange moving average today, it's the 7 EMA. The green right here is our 100. The blue is our 50. And the white is our 200. And what I want to do here is work our way back and take a look. All four of these moving averages are pressing down upon us. They're overhead resistance right now on the one hour. Next thing I want to do is take you out to the four hour. Same with the four hour from the seven all the way up to the 200. So still, guys, the trend is down. They're pushing down on us. The momentum's down. So we really have to watch that. Then what we're going to do is go out to the eight hour. We're going to start to see if we gain any strength anywhere. So right now, still on the 8-hour, we're still below all four right here. Then we're going to go out to the 12-hour, below all four, and we're having a death cross taking place from this 100-day moving average over this 200, and then out ultimately to the one day. And what I wanted to point out to you here, the 70 MA is overhead, the 50 moving average is overhead, and the hundreds overhead, and we're having this death cross taking place, this 50 over top of the 100. Now, what's good about what's taking place is that we're holding this 200-day moving average on the one-day chart, and that's also aligning with this green trend line that I'm paying close attention to because, guys, if we get a trend line break as well as start breaking down and candle closing below this 200-day moving average, then we can start looking down, you know, at some areas potentially around like $65 is kind of where I'd start looking. And that's where we had this bullish engulfing candle previously, and that's what really started this run up. So I'd be looking, let me actually put them on the chart here for you. So I'd probably be looking to see if we would get any type of bounce if we break down around that 66 and then ultimately, it would be down around like 61.45. We'd look at those areas. But guys, whenever you do break down from a moving average like this 200-day moving average, things can get very crazy. You can drop very hard, very fast. And what I wanted to point out to you is we've been up above this now. We first got above it February 17th. We came back. We back-tested it. And we've been up above it this whole time. So if anyone says it's not significant if we start having candle closes below it, I would beg to differ because that really is that longer-term moving average that a lot of people and long-term investors are paying attention to as well. You can see all throughout this previous bull cycle we were up above it we wicked down to it a couple times but ultimately we were up above it and then here we finally lost it it was on about may 8 2018 and we started getting pushed underneath and you can see all these moving averages acting as overhead resistance so that's why it's so important that we defend this 200 day moving average as well as the fact that we had this massive gap as well because when we back tested it here guys we broke out we back tested it this whole time we had not back tested the 200 day moving average until basically guys it was our first real true back test of it was about August 9th 2019 so that's very significant and we don't want to go breaking down below that so we have to pay attention that these moving averages are pushing us down our main one here is still acting as support and the candle that we're looking at right now is a bit of a short day candle so still a lot of indecision here almost like a spinning top body's a little bit too thick for a spinning top and you want those longer wicks but we're we're still in an indecision candle a short day candle here we're waiting to see if we break down through here if we're going to start pushing back up 
and for me, the first test would be to get back up above that seven-day EMA. And the reason I did a seven-day EMA, I wanted a little bit more short-term force. And since the crypto market's open, open seven days a week, I wanted to do that just for each day there. So seven days a week there. And what we need to do is start closing up above that. And that's at $87.31. So we're getting crammed between even the seven EMA and this 200, a real short-term one week, and our longer term there. So eventually, we're going to have a break, guys. And if we break to the upside... We'd look to close above that 87.32. Then I'd look up around, we'll call it $90, 96.36. And then ultimately up there around that $100, that psychological $100 mark. And then, like I said, to the downside, Dad, we'd look to see at around that 66, see if we would have any type of support off of that. And I also want to see what our percentage would be if we are to break down through that, because that will be pretty significant if that's the case. Guys, we've had every bit of 40% break sometimes out of these, just to be aware. And that would take us almost to $50 if that was the case. You know, you can look anywhere around that 20 as well, 20, 30. So yeah, about that $65. Now, sometimes you'll break down through and then you'll bounce back up and back test it before you ultimately fall farther or you get back up in it. So we really want to pay attention to how the day is closing below it. Next, what I wanted to do is go into a few indicators with you all and just kind of see how they're looking. So let's start with the Bollinger Bands. And the Bollinger Bands, we're at the bottom of the bands here, so that's a good thing. We're a little bit overextended to the downside. So that's good. We want to see if we can start getting back up and testing that middle band around $91. So that's a good thing. We're in that oversold territory on the Bollinger Bands. Next one, let's do our RSI. RSI, we're at 38, so we're a little bit lower there. You can see we're pointing down right now, so we're just going to have to kind of wait and see, just kind of floating in this channel here between about, we'll call it 35 on the RSI and 50, right in that range. We've been floating for quite a while now. Not, not a ton's really been going on. Next one, let's do our stock. With the stock, we're at 35 and 30. We had this uh, bullish cross here, guys. Things were looking good. And now it's looking like we're having a little bit of indecision here. We have not crossed over to the downside yet, so we want to keep an eye on that. We, you know, we, Sometimes, guys, we can touch, then we can even move further to the upside. So that's a possibility as well. But on the stock, we're at 35 and 30. And then let's do our MACD. And on the MACD, it's looking like we're having... Basically, they're just... We did have this downward cross. They were pretty close, just kind of kissing there. But now you can see we did have a downward cross. So we want to pay attention to that and see if it's one that will have follow through. If we're just going to have a slight bounce to the bottom and then start moving to the upside is what we're going to be looking at. So guys, really, I mean, this is just a spot why I'm bringing this to you is because I just want you to be careful and protect yourself. Because if we do start seeing a lot of down, downward pressure, things could get ugly pretty fast just due to the fact, you know, we've been up above this 200-day moving average for quite a while now, and we've had quite the defense of it. Another thing I wanted to point out was our Fibonacci. And with our Fibonacci, we are sitting directly on this 50 Fibonacci, which is a key area. Right now, guys, I believe we're sitting almost directly on it. Yep, we're sitting directly on it right now. So we're either going to have a strong defense of that or we're going to start breaking down through. And then we would also look at that 0 0.618 as a potential bounce area. And guys, that's what will happen sometimes. You'll have a monstrous move like we had here, and then you'll retrace back to that 0 0.618, that golden area right there. And a lot of the times, the 0 0.618 will run back up to the 0 0.382, and that would probably take us around that 98.65 is what we'd be looking at. But Fibonacci is very key, guys. I even use it in just like my little micro or macro fibs because what I do, guys, I also play the stock market. If you take a look over here, these are just some of the coins, all the things I'm looking at. So these are some of the stock market stuff I, I look at. And then I start getting into, you know, Bitcoin, XRP. I got Civic, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Quantum, Populous, OMG, Zcash, Bitcoin Cash, Digibyte, Neo, Theta. And then I start getting into some uh, cannabis stocks. I do some of those and then just some other regular stocks that I'll go through. And basically, I'll trade those on like a 15-minute time frame. And I'll just try to swing them and get parts and pieces and just trying to build a small account is what I'm trying to do. Almost like paper trading, but with just small amount of money. Start with like a $500 account and just really trying to grow it. In terms of the stock market, that's what I'm looking to do. Just really try to grow a small account. And you know, guys, like today... 
I didn't have much time to do it, but I came home and I had like 15 minutes and it was just a quick little trade. I got in and out, made a little profit there and that was it, closed out. So, you know, I'm looking at all different types of markets because what you can do once you start learning trading, you can, you know, you can trade anything. You can trade rice, you can trade gold, silver. There's so many possibilities and with Litecoin and crypto right now, it just really hasn't been moving a ton. You can see since... July 16th, really, we've just been moving sideways for the most part, up and down in this little channel. So, guys, we're just going to have to see what happens here. Want to bring you a quick one here, best that I could. But if you like these videos, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I appreciate you all being here with me. Those notification bells will help you because I'll just help you get this out. As soon as I get done with these guys, I edit them or do whatever I have to do to them, upload them, and then uh, send them out to you the quickest I can. So, if you like, like them, guys, leave it down low. Take care. God bless.